welcome back to the Off Grid family. Today we'll be revisiting the 100 watt torch, doing the third part. Um, in this part I'm going to hopefully get as much together as I can. I may even finish it, I'm not entirely sure. Before I go on, I had a message about a laptop. I have responded to your message, but YouTube doesn't actually give you any notifications that I've responded. So if you just check your private messages, I have actually responded to it. If I do get the laptop, I will make another torch and it will mean I've got all links to where I bought my exact things as well and I can make a better version of this torch. This torch will be rechargeable, but more of a, you have to plug it all in to recharge it. Whereas the one I wanted to make, it would have had a docking station so I could dock it and recharge it. But anyway, let's get on with it um, and I'll show you what I've done so far. So here's the sprayed pipe. It doesn't look fabulous, but it looks, I think, a little bit better. I sprayed the inside with a reflective silver, the outside with a black, as you can see. But if you're playing along at home, you'll have noticed that I forgot to drill holes for the heat sink. Obviously, that was a mistake on purpose. No, um, I'm going to have to figure out where I'm, where I'm attaching the heat sink from the outside and just hope I can drill holes without making too much of a mess. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to put the um, heat sink in, push it up to a certain point, and then I think I'm going to just drill where you know where I think it's going to be. I've got to be very careful though. to the thing and missed. That's missed, that's missed. I think about there will be ideal for it. So it's gonna be a hit and hope I'm afraid. I'm just gonna have to sort of work out where I should drill and I'm just gonna drill I think just one because it's pretty much solid in there. It's gonna take quite a bit of force to get it back out again. Due to me putting these on the side, it's made it so tight now, I honestly don't think I'm going to need to screw it in. I think I'm just going to shove it up there as tight as I can. It won't move at all once it's in there, so I think that's how I'm going to proceed. So that saved me drilling one hole. This is the plastic material I'm going to be um, covering the lens with. Um, it's, I think it's a type of plexiglass, but I'm not sure. It's, it's um, see-through. But I've drawn my little um, circle, well, oval, by placing it down and then tracing it and so on. Um, and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut it out. And I'm not sure whether I'm going to sand it. I might end up sanding it to give it a better way of diffusing the light. But honestly, I'll do that after I've stuck it all and everything. I want to see what it's like first. So I think my next job is cut this out. I'm not going to cut it out exactly on the line. I'm going to cut it out so there's a little bit of... Um, leeway and then I'm gonna um, sand and file the edges round uh, because I couldn't get a perfect um, perfect print of it so I just want to be sure because I don't want it being too small Okay, well I completely failed at that. I've snapped it in two places. I may still end up having to use that because I don't think I've got any more of this anywhere. Damn it. Okay, so even after I tried again cutting with um, a hacksaw, um, it snapped completely. So we've got a huge chunk come off it here. So what I'm going to have to do is, unfortunately, buy some more because I don't have any more at all. And I'm going to use a Dremel to cut it out next time. Ah. Uh. Okay, so you saw me using the scroll saw on this, and that didn't work very well, did it? But I went back to what I wanted to do originally, which was use the cutting disc, the small cutting disc of the multi-tool I've got. Very cheap multi-tool, but it's lasted longer than any of the name brands I ever bought. 
Um, unfortunately, I did split it when trying to do it with the scroll saw, but that's, you know, that's my own fault, my own stupidity, you know, that's like using a chainsaw to cut a twig. Um, but that's that done. I've sanded all the edges, if it's alright-ish, but before I connect it, I want to make sure that it's, um, it's not going to bounce the light around in the wrong um, direction, etc. I am thinking about sanding it so it diffuses the light better, but again, that's another thing I'll see by the end of this, we'll, we'll know hopefully. Okay, next, I'm going to work on this. Now, I also forgot to drill out um, holes for this inside, so I'm going to have to come up with some clever, cunning idea, possibly adhering it to the fan or something. I may just end up put, um, putting in a piece of um, PCB. Uh, drilling it out so it connects to that, then epoxy in the PCB in. I'm not sure. I'll figure out something. But the next thing I want to do is work on the electronics. In one of the other videos I'd said about taking off this. Now I've decided against it. I'm, I, it's, I can't be bothered to be honest. It's just pure, pure. I want to get this sorted and done. I need to use this torch so um, I just, I'm just going to screw them in. As for the battery clip, what I've done is I'm just going to wire two sockets together. One will connect directly to the battery and one will be connected down at the bottom like so and be poking out the hole. So it means, where's the hole gone? Oh. Well, I couldn't have gone around that any further. So I can have one that pokes through the hole like this and one that's actually connected to the battery and it means I can just directly ch charge the battery from there. As I say, I wanted to dock it, but I broke it, so that's that's that. I can't do anything about that. With the ports on here, I've made some little attachments. This here is a female to female, and this will connect to the uh, battery inside. And then one of the female heads will poke out through this hole here. And it will mean I can connect it up to the charger, and it will actually allow me to... Um, check that each of the cells inside are fine and so on and it will just keep that all safe and then I've actually made this connector here which will then connect into the female and then connect to the actual charger I've got uh, it's all pretty straightforward I'll do some high-res photos of them too uh, but basically all it is is you know I've just soldered wires between so they're the exact set you know they are just basically extension leads this is female to female this is male to male very simple what I need to do I need to epoxy some nuts on the inside here so we can get the feet on as well but I'm going to do that after I've put everything in because it was such a tight squeeze I don't want any of the nuts or bolts to restrict it going in. I'm going to screw the handle on right now. Okay, so that's the handle on. And now I'm going to start actually soldering bits and pieces together. The first thing I need to solder is a couple of wires to the actual LED. To do that, I'm going to just unscrew these um, screws. Going very careful. Screw them both, unfortunately. Okay. On the pad of these LEDs, there is a tiny, tiny little positive and a tiny, tiny little negative. But I put a little dot of black near the negative so it's just easier for me to see. Okay, I've got two tinned ends of wire and I'm just going to place them on to the corresponding colours, so negative to black. Now obviously this is now connected to a heatsink, so this will be harder to get hot enough. I might have to turn my soldering iron up. Pull it a bit more. Now 
and there we go. Now there's no point me hot gluing any connections here because this will get too hot and probably, well it shouldn't get too too hot but it probably melt the hot glue. Okay let's screw this back on. Make sure that's sat properly. Okay, now it's time to work out where everything goes and how it all goes together. First thing I'm going to do is tin these ends and then I'm going to connect these to the output of our, ver um, of our voltage regulator. Okay, so they're tinned. I've said in the past, but tinning just means covering it in a coat, well, coating it in solder. So remember, we've got to always make sure they're in the right holes. There you go. Now, I need the fan to be connected to one of the power cords, um, but through the battery too. Okay. Okay, what I've decided to do is make a couple of splices into this wire. So, first one. There are plenty of ways to do that, but it's easier if you've got tools. I don't have many, but what i got I use to the max. Okay, so that's them spliced in there and then heat shrunk just to keep them from, you know, touching while they're in the torch or whatever. Okay, so, so far we've got the LED connected to the, uh, the voltage regulator. The next thing I want to do is connect the power cables. And I'm going to be connecting them through a switch and the fan is going to be directly to them as well so that the fan only gets 12 volts. So here's my switch, which I need to tin the ends of. I'm, I'm heat shrink tubing everything that will be left out in the open, you know, that so it doesn't touch, for example, the heat sink and so on and so on. But if you don't have heat shrink tubing, then just use electrical tape, you know, it'll work just the same.
Okay, so I need to connect the fan, the uh, uh, positive power cable, and one side of this um, switch all together. So I'm going to connect them like this, and then I'm going to whop a heat shrink tube over the lot. Now I'm not going to heat shrink tube that yet, like I'm not going to heat it up yet because if I've got any issues with connections I can quickly go back and sort them out easily. Right so the positive is going to go in through the switch and to the positive of this voltage regulator. Oh, I need to unscrew that a bit more. That screw seems to have broken. I might have to glue that in in a minute then. Now the negative end, I'm going to get the other side of the fan. And solder them together. I only soldered the lower half because I'm going to be cutting it off anyway. Okay, so that whole thing is now connected and I'm going to do the first test with the battery. Now it shouldn't matter which, uh, which clip I put the battery in and let's give it a test. Well, I'm an idiot. Okay, before I even go any further, I've, I've realised I've made a mistake. The fan should actually be connected the other side of the switch here. So I'm going to cut that off immediately. That's why I don't um, shrink my tubes before I check. Okay, that's one end. Need to cut that down. Okay. Let's test this out now. Perfect. Okay, I need to clean all this up a bit and then I'll talk you through exactly what, what each wire does and where it's going. Okay, let me talk you through this mess of wires then. We've got our negative and positive. The positive leg is coming down and through a switch into the power cord, uh, into where the power in goes, and the fan is connected to there. We've also got the negative 
go into the negative arm. So it means that the fan is activated at the same time with the switch, but it's only getting the 12 volts. And then the LED is coming to the out of the voltage regulator. It looks like a mess, but it's all, you know, it's all doing what it should. Next thing for me to do is seal the heat shrink tubing here, and then I'm going to glue all across here with hot glue because these contacts, are, uh, these actual screws are all pretty much worn out. Okay, I've decided I'm actually going to glue the uh, voltage regulator onto the back of the fan, making sure nothing's in the fan. I think that way it's the best way to keep it cool and a place to put it because I haven't really got anywhere to put it. I, I accidentally on purpose forgot to put holes for it. No, I completely forgot I needed to drill holes for it to be honest. Now this is the bit where I get glue all in the fan and all this hard works for nothing. I think that's that done. While that's drying, I just want to glue the contacts on the switch. Not that there'll be much movement once it's in, but just in case. Okay, so that's stuck on there now. Pretty solid. I'm not going to mess with it too much. We need to start getting this in. So these need to stay at the back. This needs to come to the front, and so does this. Let's hope I've left enough wire, shall we? That's a tight squeeze. Even more so with those there now. Um, should they have come around the side? No, they're all right. Let's have a look. Let's take them around the side. Oh my goodness. Whew. One thing I need to do before I do any more is on a potentiometer they have this little bent bit, uh, this little bit here that you can make a little notch for but I, I'm not going to be making any notches for it to go in so I just want to get it off so bend that down now. There you go. It's 
It's made quite brittle, just so if you don't want it, you can snap it. Uh, the oldest mistake in the book. I was supposed to wire in the switch afterwards. What a div. Right. Off it comes. Supposed to solder it out there, what a div. Okay, so that's the potentiometer on. Okay, it's starting to come together. I'm just going to go off camera and um, solder this switch on because it's very fiddly so I need to get closer to the soldering iron. It's completely my stupidity, I completely forgot I had to do it this way around. Okay, so I've rewired the switch in. Different, different switch, I'll get the glue off the other one later. I can't be bothered at the moment. So, we've got a nice function for the switch and that I can do them both with just one hand. And that's in. Now it's a case of getting these wires in so they're not going to tangle with everything and start connecting it up on the inside. So one of these gets placed through the hole and then glued in place. Okay, so they've been glued into place, like that. I am thinking about making a cover for them so that they get completely covered over, and you, you know, so they're not, you know, water, water's not an issue then, like, touching it. But I'll, I'll see, see for that in a second. And if you have a look, this here now clips to the battery so that when I'm charging it, we can still connect how, um, all of the bits and pieces to the charger to tell it how many um, cells it's got, etc checking its heat, that kind of thing. Now, there's a few more things I need to do. I need to epoxy the, the, um, the plexiglass on, just like that. I need to connect the, um, the vent at the back, and I also need to epoxy the feet, uh, the nut for the feet. So I'm gonna do the epoxy side of things first. I won't do that on camera, there's no point. Everyone's seen epoxy used, or if they haven't, it's pretty straightforward, it's just mixing two different um, chemicals together and then using them to stick. So, I'm going to do the epoxy side of things next and uh, I'll show you where I am when I get when I finish that. Okay, I am really glad I did the epoxying off screen or that would have been a mass embarrassment. I started to epoxy the glass, uh, the plexiglass, and then realised I hadn't epoxied the nut on here, so stuff started to dry. I virtually had a bath in the stuff. So that was a bit of a pain in the bum, but I, it's all done now. It's all epoxied in, all the screws and bolts 
I epoxied them and then I hot glued them just to hold them while the epoxy set. Uh, and the, these are in as well and all sound as a pound. Now I've decided I'm going to hot glue the battery to the side of the wall. It's not advised using hot glue on a uh, LiPo battery but I'm going to do it anyway just because I've got no other way of doing it at the moment. I've thought and thought but I can't think of any other way. So I'm going to hot glue the battery in, connect it to all the connectors and put the vent on the back. So there, that's my job next. Okay and there it is, finished. Doesn't have the feet on it yet but I'll do that tomorrow. But what I'm going to do is I'll end it there um, and I will show you it outside in a field or whatever uh, later on um, in the next video. I'll just do a quick this is how it looks kind of video. But there it is. It's all working. Thanks for joining me. If you are following along and you need any help at all because I'm not always the best at articulation and description. So if you need any help please just ask for help in the comment section. If you'd like to subscribe, that'd be awesome. Um, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up because I know I'm doing something right then. Um, also, you can check out our Patreon page if you like. Um, or join us on Twitter for all the latest updates and what we're doing when we're doing them. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you again soon. Bye.